It's a beautiful day in New York, and go to YouTuber Daniel Goldhorn is about to review a movie called Finding Jesus. That's weird. I don't usually narrate my videos. <clears throat> Anyways, yes, today I'm talking about a movie called Finding Jesus. This is a very special movie to me. It's special because it's the worst movie I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Actually, I don't really know. I've not even seen it yet. I usually watch a movie before deciding to do a video on it. That's really weird. But I guess I'm reviewing it today. Finding Jesus comes to us from Wild Owl Entertainment, a studio acclaimed for such hits as Groundhog Dave, Planes with Brains, and Hodge Saves Easter. But Finding Jesus is marked as the most popular entry in their filmography. So of course I got to see it. Apparently. Finding Jesus opens with It's a beautiful underwater day in the ocean. Narration from someone who's very, very excited to have a voiceover role in Finding Jesus. We're introduced to our two main characters, Muggles and Joy. And right away, we can see both the animation and the voice acting. Joy, I can't think of anyone better to search for algae than with you. Same here, Muggles. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god. The voice acting. It's awful. Grating. The animation. It's just this loop over and over as the camera cuts between the two of them. And speaking of the camera cutting, oh my god, can we slow down, please? Ugh, this is a great start. Muggles and Joy meet Professor Shark at his school near the entrance of Bubble Town. Why am I talking about this like it's a real movie? Why am I saying these words? They strike up conversation. Jesus sure has blessed us with lives in such a beautiful underwater universe. That's not how normal, healthy children who grow up in healthy, normal environments talk. Anyways, they need to help a friend named Scary Henry with, and I quote, a problem of a personal nature. He might could use a little pep talk. Do you want us to try talking to Scary Henry, Professor? No, he said give a pep talk figuratively. Did, did anyone proofread the script? Did... Uh, Jason Wright reread the lines as he wrote them? This... this can't be real. This cannot be an actual thing that someone made. Right, what's the deal, Henry? You seem down in the dumps. Oh yeah, he sure seems real down in the dumps. Look, I never like to target animators because animation is a difficult job. It's an often thankless job that requires a skill set that I do not have, and it's a difficult industry to work in. But is it really too much to ask for a character down in the dumps to have a frown on their face? Anyways, we find out what's bothering Scary Henry, and... And it turns out that he doesn't have a home. I don't even have a reef to call home. Oh, gee, that's actually pretty serious. I wonder how our heroes, Muggles and Joy, will reply to this. And they reply that it's okay, he has Jesus. And if we're alive on this earth, we're home. Yeah, you know, that's a nice sentiment. But I think most people would still be happy to have a home of some kind. Scary Henry also says, You try being the life of the party when everybody calls you Scary Henry. Huh, you know, that's a good point. Why does everyone call him Scary Henry? He's no more scary than anyone else in this movie. If it's bothering him, then an easy way to help him would be to not call him that. I have an idea. We'll go talk to Mrs. Wedley. I, I, uh, I don't know if that's needed. It sounds like he's opening up to you already with his issues, and, and they're already gone. Exercising regular gratitude to God can work wonders in our lives. Okay, but he's fallen on hard times and he needs help, and he needs people to stop calling him Scary Henry. Like Psalm chapter 9 verse 1 tells us, 
I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Yeah, okay, you're bringing out a Bible verse. That's great. But the guy needs help now. Jesus doesn't exist as a vending machine paid by prayer. You gotta actually do something for this guy. Muggles and Joy return to Scary Henry with some new advice that hopefully yields a new reaction. <sighs> So they go back to Scary Henry and deliver their little aphorism. Through Jesus, all things are possible. That no matter what we're facing, faith in him and praise to him and thanks to him will return his love to us. Which of course is ridiculous. And they'll learn that intentions have to be combined with actions in order to have a positive impact on the world. You know, I'm a little more inspired just hearing that. That's a smile. I see a smile. He's been smiling the whole time. What is even happening right now? I feel like this movie is trying to gaslight me, saying that things are happening that aren't happening. This is like the polar opposite of how you make a movie. We didn't do anything, Henry. It was all Jesus is doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can say that again, Muggles. Or are you Joy? I honestly don't remember which is which, and I don't care. After that, they return to Professor Shark and give him some kind of debrief. How in the sea did you open his eyes? Well, Mrs. Wedley helped a little. And Jesus helped a lot. Right, because all you need to do when you have no home and people are being mean to you is just pray. Taking actions to try and improve your own situation, there's no need for that. With a heart full of gratitude and love for Jesus, Little Muggles and Joy head out to sea for another fun-filled adventure. Woohoo! Yay! Oh, thank goodness it's over already. Well, I'd say this was a pleasant experience, but then I'd be a liar. I'm sure Jesus wouldn't be happy about that. <laughs> but at least the story's over, and I can... Why am I only 12 minutes into a 68-minute movie? It's a beautiful day in the ocean, and Little Fish Muggles and his best friend, Joy, are swimming back to their reef. They're repeating the intro. It's... They don't even have a feature-length story. It's a... Oh my god. It's a package film. <laughs> well... That's great, but let's see. If they're all roughly the same length as the previous one, looks like we have six parts to it. Well, let's just get this over with. I mean, how much worse could it possibly get? Hmm, are you sure you're not a clownfish? <laughs> Anyways, they go to see Professor Shark again. And he tells them that he once again needs their help. Marlow wasn't paying attention and got himself stuck in seaweed. And as we all know, if he can't swim and keep water rushing through his gills, he can't breathe. And if he can't breathe, well, uh, I don't I... Oh, no. I'm sorry, I got distracted by the... Right. And I miss the fact that their friend is actively dying. He's asphyxiating as they speak. What an escalation. So Muggles and Joy and Professor Shark jump into action to keep talking about Jesus. Love and friendship are the glue that holds our world together, Joy. And it's just as importantly, they're gifts from Jesus to be cherished and honored. You know what else is a gift from Jesus? Oxygen, which your friend can't get because he's suffocating. Anyways, they go off to try and find Marlo from his tracking signal, but on their way, they lose it. I've lost Marlo's distress signal, Muggles. It's just gone. What they're tracking it with, I don't know. Pickles? <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh, but it did. Pickles tells them that it's okay. Marlo actually freed himself from the seaweed off screen. Thank goodness, because it would have been really hard to animate him getting out of the seaweed. Muggles and Joy still go to check on him, passing by a turtle that's 
Clearly from a different asset pack along the way. Wow! I've never had friends who risked their lives for me before! They... risked their lives? How did they risk their lives? Why, why would you write this? Why are you writing things into your movie if you're not going to actually do them? You can't just lie and say things are happening that aren't happening. This makes no sense! In return for them being good friends, Marlo takes them to an algae bed that's clearly not an actual algae bed. We also get this line. You know, you remind me of David and Jonathan from the Bible. Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Actually, in the second book of Samuel, chapter 1, verse 26 of the modern English version, oh yeah, I can play this game too. David laments Jonathan with the words, your love was more remarkable than the love of women. I'm dying to know what the biblical literalists have to say about that. The two return to Professor Shark. They detail their mission success. And we learned that the bond of friendship is one of the strongest and more cherished gifts Jesus has given us. Yeah! I guess because people weren't friends before Jesus came along. Also, it's funny how creepy this makes friendships seem. Jesus gave us a great friend in you, Marlo. And we honor our friendship because we honor his gifts to us. And we want to be your friends for a long, long time to come. Jesus gave you to us as a friend. And we want to honor his gifts to us for a long, long time. And finally... With a heart full of gratitude and love for Jesus, Little Muggles and Joy head out for another fun-filled adventure in the sea. I swear, it feels like I'm skipping a record or something. They just repeated the same outro as the last one. It just keeps repeating. It's a beautiful day in the ocean, and Little Fish Muggles and Joy are swimming back to their reef. Okay, we're just moving on. So Muggles and Joy have spent all day exploring new reefs and commenting about how rich the fish who live there are. It sure is a great icebreaker to show up at some stranger's coral reef with a load of yummy algae for them and their offspring to feast on while you all get acquainted. Why? 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 Why would you phrase it like that? Why would you phrase it like that? Anyways, they talked to Professor Shark about how they gathered up the algae they shared with everyone. And I think the voice actors are starting to struggle a little bit here. Patty, the whale told us about a brand new bed where amazing algae grows. Arrgh. She came across it when she was singing one morning and thought of us. And when we saw it, we realized there was so much fluffy algae. We just had to share and deliver it to other fish. We could have just told them where to find it, but we were already there. Okay, I literally do not care about how you got the algae. Can we just move on for God's sake? Anyways, Professor Shark takes about four hours to tell them that by helping people they get closer to Jesus, so they're allowed to play the rest of the day. Then they leave and run to a friend called Fizzy, who takes about 40 hours to explain that being nice is in the Bible. Is this a good time for me to point out that we don't even see them doing the good thing that everyone is praising them for? This is like the opposite of how you write a movie. We're beyond the movie telling instead of showing. The movie can't even tell things in a coherent way, and it'll contradict what we are shown. And everything looks the same! Do you know how hard this video is going to be to edit? At least, when I'm reviewing something like Artemis Fowl, I can say, oh, I need a clip of the troll fight. That's after CGI Josh Scat splits his jaw open and before the fake out death with Butler. But how am I supposed to tell which scene is which when it's the same animation and the same background? What the fuck is wrong with this movie? Muggles and Joy are given a Bible verse because of course they are. When you give a dinner or a supper, do not invite your friends or brothers or relatives or rich neighbors, for they will invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Then you will be blessed, for they have no way of repaying you. That's why Muggs and Joy did these good deeds for fish who they said live like kings. They're also told that humility is good instead of expecting something in return. And that's why they decide to do something good in return for Patty. Wait, what? But what can two tiny fish like us do for a big old whale like Patty? Don't let her hear you call her that, Muggles. She's a girl, you know. I don't even want to begin to unpack that statement. <sighs> 
Muggles and Joy decide to pay back Patty by taking her to a seabed where she can find crustaceans to eat. Wait, wasn't Scary Henry a crustacean? Scary Henry, no! Then they return to Professor Shark. And fulfilling Jesus' plan for us was even more priceless, wasn't it? And we hear about how being good to other people without reward makes us feel good because it's God's plan or something. I'm certain tomorrow will be just as magical as today! Hooray! Praise Jesus! Oh my God, please stop. And let me guess. With, with hearts, hearts full, full of gratitude, gratitude and, and love, love for God. Jesus. Oh, hey, they mix it up a little bit there. Anyways, that short at least teaches kids to help others. Cool. Fine. Whatever, I guess. It's something. Jesus Christ. We're only halfway through this piece of shit. It's a beautiful day in the sea. Oh, it's a beautiful day in the sea now instead of the ocean. They're really breaking new ground with this. Muggles and Joy are going back home after playing in the open water, but it turns out they didn't do their homework. As a result, they decide to come up with a lie as an excuse. The two little fish try to pass off their lie, but Professor Shark was told by other fish that Muggles and Joy were playing. Told off screen because God forbid we make some more character models. And speaking of character models, can we please get some expressions? I feel terrible. So do I. I didn't mean to make myself and certainly not Joy feel so ashamed and let down. The chastised for lying over and over and over again. You know how the worst part of any liar revealed story is the walk of shame afterwards? That part where characters mope about how upset they are at the lie? That's basically this entire section. Muggles and Joy have to go to two more characters and be lectured about how lying is bad. We see some more stock footage that again looks nothing like the rest of the movie, and the pair meet up with Mr. Flips. And there's a very strange turn of phrase here. You would think that the lesson of the section is about being honest and not lying. I mean, that's one of the Ten Commandments, right? But instead, the issue is referred to as moral purity. Way to go, movie! You found a way to make being honest sound like a creepy thing. They get their Bible verse, this time about how they have to be role models despite being young. The book of Timothy teaches us, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Wow! And then they get another verse. It's a beautiful passage, eh? Oh, uh, try this one. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. My gosh. That, that's what he just said, right? That was the exact verse he just said. Did they just... Reread the same line in the script twice? Y you want to know something? Have you ever seen those horrible video banqueto movies like Little Panda Fighter or Ride a Toying? At least those movies have like scenes in different settings and the characters actually move around and will have expressions on their faces and something at least resembling a plot happens? That's right. I am at a point now where I am using Video Brinquedo as a positive example. That is how utterly awful this movie is. <sighs> Mr. Flips refers them to Mr. Sushi, who is four knots that way. Okay, I know this is a small thing compared to everything else in the movie, but knots aren't a measure of distance, they're a measure of speed, actually. So, you wouldn't tell them that- OH MY FUCKING GOD! What are you two, Rita or a fish, doing so far from your reef? No! No, they didn't! I always thought you two were good, Rita fish! Ornery a few weeks old! No, 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 not the accent. Oh my god, no. Please, god, no, don't do this. Oh. So, Mr. Sushi. Mr. Sushi tells them that even if they did something bad, 
Jesus forgives. Even for two lying fishes who don't deserve a second chance? Joy, you told a little fib about your homework. Calm down, you're going to be forgiven. I'm going to try to distract myself from... <clears throat> Mr. Sushi by pointing out how disturbingly cheery this line read is. As a result of their genuine sorrow and regret for the mistake they made... Anyways... Mr. Sushi shows them a super secret place that looks like every other place in the goddamn movie, but whatever. This will be like playing and learning, all rolled up into one! Adventures in learning! I hope you get bullied. But you want to know the actual awful thing about this I'm realizing now? Mr. Sushi is the only character that changes their facial expression. He is the only one that expresses even a little bit of emotion. That means that this horrible, awful, racist abomination is technically the best designed character in the movie. It just... it keeps getting worse. I don't know how it keeps getting worse. <sighs> They go back and tell Mr. Shark about their lessons and the importance of <sighs> moral purity. And because they studied Mr. Sushi's little rock here, they made up for their homework, I guess. Praise God! Woo! It's a calm, pleasant day in the ocean. And little fish Muggles and Joy are returning to the brand new coral reef. Muggles and Joy are returning to their brand new coral reef that looks exactly the same as the old one, which was destroyed by strong currents. All of us fish banded together today and found ourselves a brand new reef home. Once again, none of which we get to see on screen. And then, you're gonna want to sit down for this shocking twist. They go meet Professor Shark. And we get some Professor Shark lore. His school has seen peril more than once during his years as teacher. But just like always, he guides his fish through troubles with faith and grace in Jesus' name. I don't know what that's even supposed to really mean, but I'd like to see some peril or really anything happening. In fact, as they talk about the big ordeal they just went through off screen, and how they managed to overcome it, it feels like we're joining the story at its conclusion. We could have given up and scattered our schools to the wind, uh, but we didn't. I mean, I could say that it would have been nice to see that faith and perseverance actually play out and make for a stronger lesson and allow us to have a bit of story for the story that we are watching, but... What do I know? Praise be to Jesus that we're blessed with young fish as reliable as you two. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere, Professor. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, what? Our friend Boo Cakes is also having difficulty. As his longtime seabed. Anyways, they go to find their friend Pete who directs them to Boo Cakes. Boo cakes? Boo cakes. Boot cakes? Boo cakes? Boo cakes. Boo cakes. They meet Pete, and he does literally nothing except say faith is half the battle. These segments usually take at least a few minutes, but not this time apparently. But God forbid we break this winning formula. They go meet Boo Cakes the Manta Ray, and he sounds depressed. Uh, but I loved my seabed! It was all I had! Oh, I can just see how sad he looks on his face. He's almost as emotive as I am. The duo try to talk to him and say that at least he has friends, and that Jesus still loves him. Well, as Jeremiah 8-4 tells us, This is what the Lord says. You know if a man falls down, he gets up again, and if a man goes the wrong way, he turns around and comes back. Wow! <laughs> I don't trust anyone who reacts that way to hearing a Bible verse. In fact, this segment, believe it or not, is just overall written even worse than what we've seen before. But how can I find a new spot to live? I'm just one manta ray. 
It doesn't even make any sense. What are you even talking about? You can't find a new spot to live because you're just one manta ray? What does that mean? <laughs> Anyways, this section also goes into one of my least favorite aphorisms. Sometimes Jesus lets things happen for a reason, boo. You know, can we just accept that random bad things can happen and not try to spin them into being some kind of test? And also, can we not have this stupid little fish kid say shit like this? The wicked are crushed by disaster, but the godly have a refuge when they die. Now that's how we handle failure. That's like the least comforting thing to possibly say to someone who lost their home. Even otherwise decent ideas like, Don't stand around being sad. Some action will make you feel better. Are immediately followed up with, And it's also the best way to honor Jesus' investment in us. First segment that's specifically about weathering hardship and setbacks. The most we can get is, Oh, just be a fan of Jesus and everything will be okay. And look, I'm not saying I'm opposed to Christian media. I'm not even opposed to parents wanting to communicate their faith to their kids. But there's a way to do it that actually has practical life lessons. There's a way to write this segment that would show the characters actually overcoming adversity by helping each other out that they can say is inspired by Jesus' example. They could... Why am I even trying here? Why am I wasting my breath? The movie can't even keep its own writing straight. We also learned quite a bit about dealing with life surprises and failures. Thanks to our old buddy Pete. Really? Uh, do tell! Well, this is what the Lord says. You know if a man falls down, he gets up again. No. No, he didn't. That verse was not said by Pete. I feel like this movie is trying to gaslight me. I feel like I'm just Gratitude wasting my life on for Earth God. trying to- Little muggles and joy go forth. Success is great, but failure's not scary. Not with Jesus on our side, muggles. Amen. Amen. Hey, do you remember that one gospel story about Jesus breaking the loaves and fishes to feed a crowd? Do you think Jesus would be okay with me breaking some fish myself? It's another great day in the ocean. Oh yes, yes it is a great day in the ocean because there's only 13 minutes left in the runtime. You don't have time to make another segment. I only have to sit through one more of these things and then I'm done. Come on, it can't get any weirder than it already is. Don't look now, it's Professor Shark, the beloved teacher of muggles and joy. Not to mention, he's at the tippity top of his food chain. Wait, hold on. Predation exists in this world? Is he like... Know what? I'm just gonna keep the lid on this particular can of annelids. We're near the end, and we won't have to care anymore. Hell, even the audio editors don't seem to care anymore. Listen to this cut. What do you think she would leave old Rosie in the lurch? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? What do you think she would leave old Rosie in the lurch? I can't believe it. No part of this movie works. This movie is fundamentally disordered on every single level of filmmaking. Anyways, Professor Shark is down. Fizzy promised to Rosie that she would play today, but hasn't been around, so Rosie is now upset. Hello, well. So our dynamic duo go to meet up with Rosie, who is just horribly crushed and heartbroken that the playdate has been missed. Can't you tell how sad she is? No, she obviously doesn't want to see me. They rationalize that maybe Fizzy slept in or had to run an errand. Rosie thinks that Fizzy forgot about her, so they decide to go and try and find Fizzy, which they do. Fizzy thought it was the wrong day. My sense of direction is terrible! It just occurred to me that this has had nothing to do with Jesus so far. Anyways, the two fish go back to Rosie to fill her in on what's happened. You still want to be my friend? After I left you high and dry today? Sure I do! <laughs> I'm a pink fish! We are loyal to the end! <laughs> oh, that's not what you were saying a little bit ago, you lying little piece of shit! It's all fixed, no hard feelings! Oh! It's important to keep the promises we make! Yeah, for ourselves, our friends, and for Jesus! Who keeps track of everything we do, and every choice we make! And they made it creepy again! 
Jesus sees all children. Obey the panopticon of Jesus. They really make up for lost time in this segment, actually. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to their forefathers, and they took possession of it. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord handed all their enemies over to them. Again, very normal things to say to a child. They reiterate that keeping your promises is important and that a promise to a friend is no different than a promise to Jesus. And you wouldn't skip out on a play date with Jesus, would you? And then finally... With souls brimming with faith and love for Jesus, Muckles and Joy set out to spread his word far and wide throughout the sea to the four corners of the world. Praise Jesus, Joy! Always and forever, Muggles. Woohoo! It's over. I'm. I'm done. I'm free. I. Wait. Delphi? Orbit? Scales? Snaps? Button? Bitsy? Those aren't characters in the movie. And nobody is credited to the role of Marlo? Not even the credits have been done correctly. Where do I even begin? Nothing in this movie. I mean, literally no aspect of this movie is good. No aspect of this movie is even acceptable. This movie is fundamentally broken on every level to a degree that I've never seen on any other movie before. The themes are so utterly disordered, the writing veers into the worst non sequiturs, the animation is actually the worst, the editing is noticeably broken, the voice acting is... Arrgh! There's no such thing as scenes in this movie. There's no such thing as settings. I... I think this is it. This is actually the worst movie I have ever seen in my life. And I don't think Jesus himself could save me if I somehow found something actually worse than this. <sighs> At least it's over now, and I can get out of here. Why is the video not ending? What's it doing? What, what is it doing? It's a beautiful underwater day in the ocean. No, 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 please. I, I can't do it again. Please don't make me do it again. I can't handle another, it's a beautiful day in the ocean. I can't handle another, it's Professor Shark. I can't handle another, muggles enjoy our best fish friends. I'm sure tomorrow will be just as magical as today. Hooray, praise Jesus. Jesus has blessed us with our lives in this beautiful underwater universe. Uh, Bookies, Mr. Sushi, Mr. Gary Henry, what are you doing here? Are you here because it's another beautiful day in the sea? For best fish friends, muggles enjoy, we can play and learn at the same time. Adventures and learning and fulfilling Jesus' plan for us is even more fulfilling. Success is great, but failure's not scary, especially not with Jesus on our side. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the ocean! <laughs> don't worry, he's fine. These videos don't have any continuity anyways. 